Okay, everyone, I'm so excited today to have my mentor and my teacher, Dr. Jessica Richmond, on the show. She's a very busy lady, so we're very, very lucky to have you here, uh, Dr. Jessica. So, uh -huh. um, and you're in India right now, right? Yeah. You just, you know, um, one of the things, one of the things I love about you is that you live your dharma you live everything <laughs> that you you preach and you live it um <laughs> and uh yeah why don't you tell our listeners a, a little bit about you and where you are at the moment so i'm a psychologist and i specialize in vedic psychology that's why i live in india and i study under my guru paris also knows him right you've been studying under him a long time too yes his name is Babaji Satyanarayana Dasa, but we just call him Babaji. And he teaches about this very sublime form of love called Bhakti Yoga. Mm. And so my role is to help people clear out any old stuff from in their mind, like that blocks them from being able to absorb his teachings and get to this very high form of love. I'm like the car wash of the mind, basically. <laughs> I love that. The car wash of the mind. <laughs> well, you have been helping me with that for how many years now? I mean, <laughs> you know, the car wash, it's like, it it's not it's something that gets done really quickly. It's like, we figure one thing out, we clear it out, and then another yeah. thing shows up. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, Jessica, I need you. I don't know what to do with this other thing. Um. So we've been doing that for years and I first met um, you in one of the Vedic or uh, Ayurvedic um, trainings that I did. And I think it was happening, the advanced Ayurvedic training that was happening in Boston. Yeah. And you showed up with Baba G and <laughs> you, you're both like, there's this calm and um, elegance about you and you're just sitting there like, you know, look at these the students hopefully they'll have it figured out you know and um and then I just uh everything you were teaching was like for me boom 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 oh my god this resonates so much with me and um of course uh Ayurveda is a very vast field and we love every bit and aspect of it but it was uh the Ayurvedic psychology that really intrigued me and that's how I started um, studying and becoming a clinical counselor and, and bringing that into my practice. Um, so I've learned so much of my, my stuff from you. And uh, so I appreciate that. Um, but today, we're going to talk about something that is very interesting and exciting for many of our listeners, including myself. And that is relationships romantic relationships because oh yeah <laughs> oh, aren't they so juicy <laughs> um you know I was just uh, talking to a friend the other day on a different podcast and I was like oh when whenever I'm like doing meditations or I'm in a retreat or in the Himalayas meditating my ass is on fire on <laughs> enlightened like I'm so enlightened but the moment I come back to my relationship, I know what happens. It all falls apart. <laughs> and all of my samskaras start showing up. Right? Yeah. And so I think a lot of my listeners and clients know a little bit about samskaras because I talk about them all the time. But they're yeah. basically these memories at the like back of our subconscious mind that are always there and ready to be activated but whatever whatever we feel and usually in our romantic relationships we feel the most right is that why so yeah. please please tell us yes before I, I before I answer I just want to say that you are our Vedic psychology poster child you are the, our success a big success story for us because Vedic psychology when we met you we had just started working together Babaji and I you know I was living in the U.S working at a psychiatric hospital. And Babaji said, I have this philosophy, Vedic psychology, but I don't have patience because I'm a guru. I don't see clients like that. Can you try it with your clients? You know, so that was, you know, back in, I think, 2015, 16, 15. Yeah, 2015 that I tried it first. 
you know? And so it was really like, you were one of the very first people who grabbed hold of it and like were the proof of concept because, you know, you took it, you learned it, you applied it to yourself, you improved so much in your life, right? In all the different ways in your life, you got these huge success stories. And then you went all the way to the max. You went back to school, you became a counselor on top of everything else, you know? So really, I, I the call I was just on before this, I was telling him about you, not because oh, of the podcast. Yeah. I was like, let me tell you about our, our client success story because we, um, I mean, you you represent our vision of what Vidic Psychology should be, that somebody takes it and absorbs it and brings it into their life and then teaches other people it, you know? So I just wanted to say thank you really from the bottom of both of our hearts. For, oh, thank for, you. For, yeah, for taking thank these you teachers. For saying for, that. Yeah, no, yeah. thank you for saying that. And I think that comes from finding our dharma, right? When we talk about, when you find something that makes you so excited and um, it just feels like you even remember this information yeah. from a yeah. different lifetime. Yeah. Yeah. And there is no stopping you. Yes. Um, and people are like, how do you, how do you do all this? And then go back to school and you have little children and it's amazing because, because it gives me so much joy. You know, I know that I was, everything has come together, the yoga, oh. the yes. everything to bring yes. me to this moment where I can help people with this stuff. And you guys really created a system that can you know, teach um, people like me how to apply it in in therapy and, uh, you know, into their own yoga practices and their families. Yes. And so that system is so, so valuable because otherwise yeah. this stuff gets lost. It's such beautiful information from, yeah. from uh, I mean, these, all these ancient. These eternal, yes, these eternal truths from the Vedas, from the Indian scriptures, you know, that Babaji has put together in a way that's digestible for us you know and but you got it you know and you're bringing it to the world and we, we're so appreciative of that oh, thank you for um, affirming that for me yes you're very good at it <laughs> yeah yes I love every bit but recently yeah. I had to reach out to you and be like <laughs> I think one of my samskaras is coming up in my relationship and it's really <laughs> it's I'm blindfolded by it like I don't understand what is happening so okay so you want me to describe some scars real quick just kind of sure round, tell us. round out your okay you can use me as a case study if you want what is happening <laughs> <laughs> so I'll describe some scars and then you can describe maybe ask questions and I'll answer them related to your some scars or something like that because sure. if you bring it to like a, a story that's the best way to learn you know if we tell somebody's story and apply the concepts right yeah so you're exactly. being very very vulnerable to share but how, whatever part you want to share I'm happy to like <laughs> analyze you know according to Vedic psychology I think that will help people understand it much better you know yes. um but in general what a samskara is is it's just a memory any memory so we have you know in Vedic psychology we focus on the negative ones the ones that are like faulty programs that are almost like viruses in your subconscious mind that cause you to behave in ways that hurt you or that hurt somebody else, you know, that are dysfunctional or, and sometimes most of the times you don't even realize it because they're invisible. Then your subconscious or unconscious mind, you know, they're, they're not visible to you. What you think is that person is such a freaking jerk. Why can't they get it? You know, but just the bigger picture about some scars is like right now in the time we've talked, we've made hundreds of them. Some scars are being new ones are being made all the time. Mm. and most of them have zero charge and in, in, in other words every samskara that's ever been made every memory that's ever been made most of them have no emotional charge like brushing your teeth just you just had a sip of a drink like nothing but there's a certain sub segment that are so heavily emotionally charged and those are the ones that are our faulty programming our viruses and there's some that are so positively charged positive chargedly uh, positive emotions that those are the are good qualities. Mm. You know, like you're a really good mom. You're a really good teacher. So you're a really good yoga teacher, Ayurveda teacher, psychology teacher. So you have very good samskaras for teaching and for understanding and for being a mother, that type of thing. You see what I mean? And then you might have really negative ones for other parts of your life where you're like, why can't I figure this out? Why do I keep doing the same damn thing? Any kind of phobia we have, any kind of addiction, anytime you're feeling something other than peaceful, that's that's a negative samskara and, and, and any negative feeling other, you know, cause peaceful is like good samskaras, you know, like I'm, I'm peaceful, I'm relaxed in the world, but then why is it after your 
meditation retreat that you come back and you're like, I want to punch the wall. I'm so angry at you. That's a samskara getting triggered, but we don't realize it. That's a memory file that's in our subconscious mind of something that happened most often in the first seven years of our life. Because up until that point, that's when the personality gets formed. That's literally driving us right now. It's been activated. It's invisible. And it's making us act in a certain way. And the way it gets activated is when something similar is happening in our current life. So it mimics. It mimics what happened in the childhood. So just say you have a, like we're getting into romantic relationships. So just say you have a husband or a boyfriend, girlfriend, some partner who's like uh, aloof emotionally. That's a common one, right? Aloof emotionally. They don't, they're not checked in and attuned to your feeling. Most likely either your father or mother was like that or your primary caregiver as a child. And that was extremely painful. But we don't, that, and that never got processed, you know, with us. There's not some child psychologist who sat there and worked through it with us or something. So it's just laying there as a painful, undigested memory that I'm not worthy of love. I'm not important. My feelings don't matter, you know? So then when our partner does it to us as an adult, all those feelings like very childhood baby feelings, we start crying, we get angry, we throw a tantrum when you ignore me. But really, it's just our partners may be depressed or something. It doesn't have anything to do with us or they're checked out. But but we react like a small child. So I know that's a, a mouthful. You can take it apart. But that's the idea of what some scars are and how they play out in our life. Yeah, that so no, yeah it makes a lot of sense. And I love that you mentioned the positive side of it, too, because I'd never think of some scars that way. But it's so true. So mm-hmm. like um, if you're really motherly or. You just have all this love and you're just yep. constantly giving your children love. Yeah. That is yeah. also a samskara. It's yeah. just inside of you yeah. somewhere. You're not trying to create yeah. something that is not a part of you. Yeah. And I love that. Um, yeah. There, there's balance. There's always light. There's always hope. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And that's when <laughs> as a therapist, right? Sometimes you have to reframe things for your client and help them see all their good samskaras too. That's one of the techniques we do, right? When someone's feeling really down, we say, well, wait a minute. I mean, you are having a problem with your partner right now, but you've got all these other good qualities going on or these other good things, these other, you know, you don't have to feel that you're like a loser or unlovable just because your husband can't see you, how good you are. Right. You know? So yeah. then you help remind them of all their good samskaras, all the other people who do see the good in them, like their part, their friends. Their girlfriend. Those are some yeah, scars. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And that's how we create balance. And yeah. um, and I also love how you explain that, you know, if we are having any issues with our partners and it drives us insane to that point where we're like, why can't you why can't you say you love me or show your emotions more yes. or you know, um and it's often like 99% of time has nothing to do with us. And it's, uh, and we have chosen this person because this is a familiar pattern. Is that yeah, right? that's what we're attracted to. Yeah. We actually don't want somebody who'd be quote unquote good for us. We're attracted to what we're familiar with. So if it's the, you know, emotionally unavailable father, then we're going to pick the emotionally unavailable partner, you know, and then we get mad at the partner. And it's not, it's not that the partner is not emotionally unavailable. They are emotionally unavailable. But the problem is that it's bothering us. That's the, when we say the problem's inside you, it's that some scar that's the unhealed, like basically trauma, but we're projecting on them. Like, why don't you love me? Instead of being like, oh, that's just their nature. They're emotionally unavailable. It doesn't mean they don't love me. It means they, they can't express. Instead of being like, you know, some people like, very, I mean, it, it can hurt you very badly, especially if your mother was not attuned to you, right? If your mm-hmm. mother was not attuned to your feelings, especially with, you know, the whole attachment theory in those first few months of life, that's going to just torment you the rest of your life because you're most likely going to pick people who are not emotionally attuned to you and just feel so, so hurt all the time. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And so let's say for a person like that, um, they come to you and, uh, and, you know, actually that is very similar to what's happening with me in my relationship <laughs> and yeah. it's like um I want I want my partner to feel more or have more emotions and be yeah. more involved and engaged and this is also so good to know about like the different doshas because we talk about it all the time we're like oh well he's a kapha like yeah 
<laughs> he's just sitting there, the earth and water element, just comfortable on the couch, watching his movie. And I'm like, <laughs> why can't you? Don't you want to spend time with me? <laughs> <laughs> and every time I have to be like, Paris, he's just chilling. Like, that's who he is, yeah. you know? That's his um, nature. Nothing that's his you. nature. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so other than understanding these dynamics, knowing the doshas, uh, what else can we do in a situation like that? This is very, very hard, very, very hard, but good, excellent question. So even if you understand it intellectually, like, yeah, I know that this is my samskara. That's because my dad wasn't emotionally available for me or my mom or both. And I'm projecting onto him. Great. That doesn't change how you feel about it. It actually, it makes you feel worse. Cause then you're like, I know the problem and I still want him to change. And I still feel very frustrated and I still feel hurt. So sometimes it makes it worse. So what I say to my clients is when you get to that point that you can recognize the problem, that's a huge success. That means your awareness yeah. is raised and you, you, you should expect to feel more frustrated. You have to get frustrated and very frustrated before you, before you're going to change. So you have to be like, oh my God, like I see the problem and I see myself and I see that I'm getting triggered and I see that I'm hurt and I see that I'm angry and I see that I'm taking out on him. Oh my, I can see the whole thing, but I can't change it. Good. That's the step before change. <laughs> oh, you know? good. Yeah. I'm definitely that's, in that step. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, that's the awareness. You're very aware of it. You can articulate it. You can see what he's doing. You can see what you're doing. You know where it comes from. So that's all good. You know, so what I always say is awareness is the first step. Get crystal clear you know, on his dynamic, on your dynamic, and then you have to hit the pause button. That's when you have to pull mm. back because our nature, most of us want to try to get the partner to change, you know, and there's very subtle ways we do it. Our ahankara, which is like our ego, you know, is very, very good at rationalizing why I'm not trying to get him to change really. So basically we are, but we don't want to call yeah. it that, you know? And so what we have to do is unless they're like physically abusing you or doing something to your child or something, basically, if he's just sitting on the couch, like a couch potato, you did the right thing. Like that's his nature. That's kapha. The next step is to say, I'm feeling very frustrated and I have to do something about it. Not related to him, not related to talking to him or getting him to change in any way, meaning not even asking him, Hey, do you want to just let it be and work on you, which is your inner child. That's the inner child work. Mm -hmm. where you go okay sweetheart I see and try to think of a memory like when how was it for you when you were three or five or what age it was when dad just wasn't there for you he just wasn't checked in he was stressed about work or you weren't even living with him or you know that what what was the situation where dad was not there for you and the reason why I'm saying dad is because oftentimes in romantic relationships it's the it's your the opposite their opposite sex parent that you're projecting so I'm saying dad and partner you know because you have a male partner and father. So you're projecting whatever unfinished business you had with that onto the male partner, you know? But that's not the whole story. It could also be mom. Mom didn't attune to emotionally as well. So it feels incredibly painful. So then you have to look at that. And I always say, get out that journal, crack out the journal and start writing about your feelings. And try, uh, even if it's just one memory, that could be mm -hmm. enough to make a painful some scar and write about those and do some inner child work you know, ideally with a therapist who can guide you into talking to your inner child, nurturing your inner child, because the way some scars work are just imagine that some scars like a Microsoft Word document or like a video. It's something you that got created that can get destroyed and that can get modified. It's not something oh, that's God. like set for your whole entire life. So so then we say, oh, what's some scar is it? Like, be curious. What is it? I remember the time when my dad, you know, sat on the couch and it literally ignored me and watched a show the whole time. And I had like hurt my knee or whatever the memory is, something where he was ignoring you, you know, or he was too busy with his work. And he told me, leave me alone or whatever he did. Do you have some memory like that where your dad was aloof or not emotionally available? Um, not that I can remember. I remember him working a lot, like not being home. Yeah, and That's my it. my mom just is spending the whole day with us, trying to entertain us and stuff like that. But yeah. dad not being around much, not just working, around. working. Yeah. yeah. And um, when he would come home, how would would he, how would he act when he saw you when he would come home? Uh, coming home was always like a big hug and happiness, and he's yeah. like, he's that joyful person. But again, I don't have memories of him like hanging out with us, playing right. with us, or us right. sitting on his lap like it's so right strange. there you go 
it's there like you go. all but also I grew up in a time of war so it was yeah. like okay let's just stay alive let's right. stay alive I mean, today yeah so. yeah you guys were in survival mode and your dad was probably stressed and probably not trying to show it to you you know but little kids are smart they pick up on their parents feelings so yeah. you maybe could pick up on the fact that your dad was a little shut down and a little stressed because of war and you got that hug and stuff, which is wonderful that he did validate you in that way. But you don't have memories of like very many playful or joyful times with him, maybe because he's working so hard and also because he was maybe stressed, like he's trying to protect the whole family and you're in a war zone, you know, so yeah, th so that it's very subtle, but it's very powerful that dad, you don't have those memories of being on his lap, you know, and mm -hmm. most likely he came home, he gave you the hug, you guys had dinner, and he might have just been sitting there, like not engaging with you, you know, um, besides the hug, you know, you and, and all little kids usually want to sit in their dad's lap if their dad's nice. So you probably wanted that. So you may not remember that, you know, but you wanted to yeah. connect with him in that way. So it's not that you have to remember everything, but we're getting the theme. And the way you can yeah. tell what the memory was, was how you feel about the current partner because it's not coming from nowhere. So it's if he if it triggers you that he's sitting on the couch and just not engaging with you, that means that uh, your dad did something similar. We don't know what it is exactly, but he did something similar. So the way you work with it is you have to go against all of your desire and urge to want to grab your partner and be like, why don't you just want to hang out with me? Or to make some plan to go do something or to say, don't you love me? Or why don't you care? You got to drop all that and go in and do that journaling nurture your inner child and tell your inner child when you nurture what I mean by that is first of all acknowledge the feeling like you're feeling mm -hmm. so lonely you're feeling so unloved you're feeling abandoned rejected unimportant whatever those feelings are and then you have to tell your inner child I'm here for you now this is not that yeah. I think you have told me that like and that yeah. sticks with me and yeah. it's like this moment is not that yeah yeah I got this you moment. I yeah. got you I'm you you didn't have somebody back then that's the difference but you're still remembering it but actually what's what's happening now with your partner that's not that he's just that's his personality it's not that he doesn't love you you know but I'm here for you I'm your mother I'm your loving nurturing mother the one you never had in terms mm -hmm. of what you need you know and yeah. I'm going to tell you what you need to hear you are lovable you are worthy you're not alone because I'm right here and I see your heart all the time and I'm taking care of you and actually, there's no person in the world who can give you what you need because nobody knows you like me. Mm, gosh, and then you say, I love that. Want? Isn't that sweet? So yeah. you don't have to rely on anybody else, not your partner, not your mommy, not your dad. You know, so then you say, what, what do you need now? What would you like to do? I, I want to hug him. Well, I know you <laughs> want that, but he's not, he's not checked in right now. So what can I give you? What can you and I do together? You know, maybe mm -hmm. we don't even need to be in the house sitting around waiting for a crumble of his love. Maybe we should call a girlfriend who's also waiting for her partner to wake up and smell the coffee. So maybe the two of us could go out and get a coffee together, you know? Yeah. Like women have a way of connecting that's very special that a man and a woman can't connect. A really good mm -hmm. girlfriend, right? So you call a friend, text a friend, call a friend, go meet up with a friend, do a Zoom call with a friend, something where you connect with your heart to someone who, who has that ability and interest and is available. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I want to repeat that because it's such an important point. Um, and I want us to all remember. So when we get triggered by something like that, we need to pause, remove ourselves with that, from that situation and just go internal, check in with ourselves, grab our journal and start just writing, writing, writing about our emotions. And one of the greatest things that you introduced to me is the the wheel of emotions that I love and I have I actually have it on a pillow now on our couch oh. <laughs> so every the what, time, emotion? the what emotions did you say the wheel of emotions oh the feelings wheel the feelings yeah, wheel the feelings okay. sorry it's so cool <laughs> um but I have it and and the girls look at it now and they're like I'm angry but no let's go further in and see what kind of anger it is and Good. So I'm teaching them to really understand their emotions. And I think that something like that would be helpful for people to look at because a lot of times we don't even know what we're feeling. It's like all yeah. jumbled exactly inside and it's coming yes. out as like crying or yeah. heat in the face or in our yeah. chest. And we don't know why. That's and a we very good just, point. Uh, take it out on our partner. And it's not yeah, helpful. I mean 
<laughs> and we want our partner to read our mind, basically. We want our partner to read our mind and then make it all better. And that's coming from probably three years old. Wow. Like it's not an adult. We're all in our, we're all in our adulthood now. So no adult actually needs that unless you have like, you know, you're living in a place where you actually have a severe, you know, problem and you can't, and you're not functional with a caregiver but we don't need that you don't need that you know but when we when we get in that place when we're triggered emotionally we literally want our partner to stop and drop everything and be like oh my god you must be feeling sad and rejected right now because i'm watching the tv yeah. and you probably feel abandoned and lonely too i'm so sorry it's my bad let me just drop everything and give you a hug and tell you that you're the most special most beautiful person in the world and i want to spend all my time with you what should i do do you want me to cancel everything else and forget the night out with the guys and forget this and this i i screwed up you know that's what we want, but who, yes. Like, so that's to the extent of our little girl. That's our little girl, yeah. three-year-old Paris being like, daddy, why don't you see me? You know? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow. That's, that's incredible. And, um, and yes, uh, ladies, mostly ladies watch this. So I'm just going to say ladies. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. Um, Tune into yourself and find your inner child. And I just had this client that just did all this inner child work with me. And Aww. and she just, honestly, like the last couple of sessions we had together, she just blossomed in a way that I just could see her face change. Yes. Like, you yes. know, she like, she was glowing in a different way but she we went her and I went through so many sessions where we cuddled and we yeah. really nurtured that inner child that was yes. so hurt and left yes. out and not yes. taken care of yes and um and I had her put her little like whatever uh, age came to her and it was around three or four and we yeah. put her picture three four year old somewhere on her desk every morning Good. she would say hi Perfect. to her she yes. would offer her whatever they were doing in the house or include her yeah. in everything that was being done. Mm -hmm. And I mean, 12 sessions, 16 sessions later, she's like yep. just blossoming in that. And yeah. so this work really does work. And it's, yes. um, and it's what we need. It's like nurturing that inner part. Yeah. And I love that you mentioned also um, the woman to woman connection. It's different. Yes. It's, just a yes. different kind of Very nurturing. Yeah. Yes. One thing one thing I say to so many of my clients is I say, stop trying to make your husband or your boyfriend your girlfriend. Because he's not. He doesn't care. He doesn't want to go shopping with you. He doesn't want to look at your lotions and potions. He doesn't want to hear about all the deepest feelings in your heart. He probably doesn't want to read poetry with you. And I'm making a generalization. There's some, you know, partners yeah. who do. But in in general, that's a, a theme I hear with my clients because I have a lot of male clients. And that's what they say about their wives. <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to do that. I want to, you know, but there are some who, who do, I shouldn't say for everybody, but in general, like your point is for women, you know, hang out with your women friends who are interested in that. You have a lot more fun and stop trying to make your husband or, or boyfriend, your girlfriend. And it'll, the relationship will get a lot easier because just because the, you know, the, the husband can't validate your feelings and doesn't know your heart does not mean he's not a good husband. That's the thing. And so many women are like, well, you know, he, he just doesn't understand my feelings. So that's it. And it's like, well, actually, if you understand your feelings and you nurture your inner child, you don't need him to do that for you. You mm -hmm. know, the analogy I always say, like, you know, do you want, do you want your partner to like pee for you and poop for you and eat for you also? Because that's what you're asking him to do. When you don't take care of and, you know, nurture your own feelings, you're asking your partner to do something inappropriate for you. That's not his job. Not his job. That's your job. That is such a great um, point. So um, if we're not taking care of ourselves or if we don't know who we are or our emotions or how yeah. to handle our emotions yeah. Yeah. or what we need at this moment, yes. how would this guy, poor guy, like <laughs> exactly. who is on his own journey? Yeah. Has, has his, his own, own stars. Has yeah. His own yeah. Stars. yeah. Yep. So that's what I say. I say, like I say, as an adult, how many times in your life when you haven't been like shit based drunk, how many times when you've been sober, have you just like peed your pants at a meeting, you know, just walking around? Like we don't usually just do that unless you have a serious bladder control problem, right? So we don't just walk right. around and pee our pants. It's not socially acceptable. And all of us have learned, we've all mostly been potty trained, right? And we know 
when you're about to pee, like you don't ever hold it that long till you pee, unless it's a very extreme emergency. So why is it that are we almost every day are having like basically peeing our pants with our emotions? That's how it looks. When you have an anger outburst on someone, that means you peed your pants. Oh dear. Yes. Right. That means you didn't control it. You didn't even acknowledge it or catch it or nurture your inner child. And then you blast out on somebody else. That's like peeing your pants, you know, but socially yeah. we've been, we've been conditioned to know that it's not okay to pee your pants and it's really embarrassing and you feel ashamed if you do it. So we have no problem getting up and leaving a meeting, an important meeting even to go pee, right? Mm -hmm. We have no problem pulling off on the side of the road and driving five more extra miles to go find the nearest bathroom if we have to pee. So we do a lot of things, actually, if you notice what you do when you have to pee, especially when you're like out in public, you will, you will find in the bathroom or like some people have to like, just go in the woods if you can't find a toilet. Right. But you will make sure that you pee. You're not going to pee your pants. So think about that concept and apply it to our feelings. I, I rarely see people who have good awareness and control of their feelings. It's not that the feelings aren't coming, but we, we, we let, we don't, we're not aware of them. So they get so high that we either blast out in anger at somebody. We get completely depressed and don't even acknowledge. We don't even realize that we're depressed. You know, we think it's because of this or that or the other. We have extreme anxiety that we take out on other people and we tell them that they have to change in this way. So we're not so anxious. Mm -hmm. I mean, so those are all examples of peeing your pants. The awareness is like very low yes. of the mental, mental problems, mental, the feelings, our awareness. The feelings. Our awareness the feelings and so they manifest fully looking like we peed our pants you know and then we still don't realize we've done it actually after we pee our pants this is how the session goes can you believe my husband can you believe what he did that and I'm like okay so you didn't you didn't have any you didn't have any responsibility in this no it's him let me tell you all the things wrong with him so that's basically how it would look physically is that somebody's peed their pants and said that their husband made them pee their pants that's how it looks to me when somebody right. comes. <laughs> yes. Let's not pee our pants. Yeah. Let's have control of our emotions. Yeah. And yes. the way we get control of our emotions, again, is pause. Yep. Because the emotions are going to come. It's not like we're getting yes. rid of anything. Yeah. No. We're right. human and we are yeah. full of emotions, it's especially normal. as women. Yeah. It's normal. so normal. And yeah. so the emotions will come if yep. we have Sometimes I have for my very emotional uh, clients, we have like a pre-plan. So we plan it, yeah. we write it yeah. down. This yep. is what we're going to do step by step. When the first uh, sign of that emotion comes, yep. what do you yep. feel in yep. your body? Where do you feel it in your body? Yep. Pause, yep. step back, yep. have a spot for yourself in your home that yep. you can sit and maybe that's your safe spot or yeah. You know, I have like my meditation room and I just go there, sit down, yep. journal, um, yep. have a plan because at the, in the heat That's of the idea. moment, yeah, it's very difficult to pull back. Yeah. Once you're like, yeah. all yeah. this, like, <laughs> yeah, it's a good all idea of that comes out, then you can't really pull back. So you have to have a plan. Yes. Very good. Excellent. And you can even do a preventative plan, meaning like in Ayurveda, right? We do Dinacharya. We do things to take care mm. of our body. We don't have a problem. We just do it because we know we got it. We have to cleanse everything out every day, right? You clean your tongue, your eyes, your nose. So in Vedic psychology, I tell my clients do the mind cleaning plan every day. And we make a different one for different people, depending on what, what works for them. But it's checking in with your feelings, gazing in the mirror, looking into your eyes. What am I feeling? Writing about it, talking to an child before you even are triggered. Preventative, just like scraping your tongue, you know? Absolutely. That's such a great point. And that's why we love Ayurveda because Ayurveda is so preventative. Yes. So it's yeah. not like, let's, uh, you know, the disease or illness or emotions manifest to a point where we can't pull it back let's right. prevent it and yes all that's of these the practices thing. yes I love that you mentioned looking at yourself in the mirror that's another big yeah. thing that I've seen a lot of good outcome just look yeah. in your own eyes like yeah. who am I like how am I feeling what is yeah. it that I need yeah. what do I need today and yeah. it will change your life because yeah. Yeah. a lot of us don't even want to look at who we are or look at ourselves in the mirror. 
yeah. you know, um, it's, it's very scary thing to do for a lot of people. So yeah. if you are able to look inside of yourself, a lot of things are going to change in your life. Yeah. You know, looking inside, taking responsibility, saying, okay, that's my stuff. I'm feeling chronically anxious. You know, I have to figure out why and not, and not blame it on somebody else. You know, that yeah. that's right. A lot of things will change if you start looking wow. in and saying whatever's there. Yes. Wow. Amazing. This was so incredible, Dr. <laughs> Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're so wise and you have so much knowledge. And uh, this was such a great honor to be um, having this conversation with you. We learned a lot of little goodies and big goodies. And <laughs> I just want to uh, also let the listeners know where they can find you i know you're really busy you probably are not looking for any more business but for any more clients <laughs> but <laughs> but where can they find you i know that you do really beautiful lectures that um they're very 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 um helpful to understand these patterns to understand our mind um in the ayurvedic psychology way so uh, just let us know a little bit where we can find you and what, how um, the listeners can work with you. Yeah, thank you, Paris. So we have, an, our institute is called the Vedic Psychology Institute that Babaji and I started. So it's a very long mouthful, but the website is myvedicpsychology.com. Um, so on there- And I'll include it here under okay. this podcast, yeah. So we have that. And then we have our YouTube channel, which is the Vedic Psychology Institute as well. And there's where I put the Vedic Psychology, these free lectures talking about the mind. Um, and from the Ayurvedic standpoint of Sattva, Rajas and Thomas. So that's really mm. interesting. And tying that into mother's attachment and different things. So you might find that interesting. And then we have Instagram where I put little posts, you know, related to not only Vedic psychology, but life in India. Sometimes I just put, you've seen, right? Random things yes. about a cow down the street or some monkeys <laughs> doing something crazy. I love the cows and the monkeys. Yes. <laughs> in your posts. Yeah. yeah, we have that. And I, and, and depending on the, the type of client, you know, I am open to seeing clients. We still, I still have openings, especially okay. if they're coming through you, you know, if, if they're listening to your podcast, that's a pre- what do you call it? Pre-qualified client. It's not just a random person off the street. If they're listening to you, they're already into what we do, you know? So I'm, I do that here. Yeah. So on the website, there's a, like a form contact us or something, and they can contact me if they want to do. Amazing. Um, we yep. also have, we have e-courses. So some people may not want to do a session or listen to my you know YouTube channel, but we've made, I think, 13 e-courses all on all different topics related to Vedic psychology that are asynchronous. So you just can purchase the course and take it yourself and you can learn about all different types of things related to Vedic psychology and Babaji and I teach them together so you'll hear oh, from beautiful. a guru too what a guru has to say you know about all beautiful. these beautiful yeah he's uh he's um one of those people where I say you know in his presence when you're in his presence you heal even you know totally and he I'm like for Palu, right for um he was like a, a, a faculty you know, core faculty for the Kripalu School of Ayurveda, and he taught um, yes. psychology for many That's years. That's how Ayurveda. I got to know him, yes. Oh, and then wow. I had the, I'm so lucky because Babaji stayed in my house. Yes. Not once, twice, yeah. three times, I think, yeah. It was, yeah. and you, and it was so amazing. He cooked for yeah. us. That was amazing. <laughs> Most amazing for the days. food. Wow. Those were the days. Yes. He so, doesn't travel anymore. He doesn't travel anymore, oh. but hopefully at some point we can, um, uh, talk to him and definitely oh. listen to his yes. lectures so yeah. um yeah everyone you can find all of that stuff good stuff on the website that I'll put down here and uh, yeah thank you so much thank this you, was Paris. wonderful it was fun <laughs> it was really fun I love it when we both go at it <laughs> yeah yeah